I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I think, I'm a Serena Taylor, all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your, like, crappy one-time record on diversity, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, go for it. Maria Taylor's left ESPN. Okay, all this bickering and all of this other stuff, it's in her rearview mirror. She said bye bye. So back in 2021, former ESPN sportscaster Maria Taylor, she had actually parted ways with ESPN after both parties could not come to a mutual agreement when it came to the contract negotiations. They were both millions apart. In this Mitchell report, though. We're going to go back in time to the moment that really shocked the NBA community when leaked audio has surfaced that really kind of changed the career of Maria Taylor at ESPN. So Suzette Maria Taylor, born in Georgia, was a high school and college athlete sensation. While attending Centennial High School, Maria racked up plenty of accolades and awards from Scholar Athlete of the Year, Offensive MVP for her high school volleyball team for three years, a three-time All-Region and All-Star in high school. Taylor, in fact, was additionally selected to be a member of the 2004 USA Volleyball Junior National A2 team. In college, at the University of Georgia, Maria Taylor continued to be a two-sport player, being named All-SEC in volleyball from 2005 all the way up to 2009. Fast forward into 2013, Maria became a sideline reporter for ESPN2 weekly Saturday night primetime college football telecast. In 2019, Maria began hosting NBA Countdown, the pregame show for ESPN's Friday night and Sunday afternoon basketball games. The following year, however, brought many changes to the life of Maria Taylor, most notably the leaked audio by Rachel Nichols that shocked the NBA community. So meet Rachel Nichols, who at the time was a seasoned veteran as a host at the ESPN network. Now, leaked audio footage was released to the public of Rachel Nichols being caught saying while she wants diversity at ESPN, she sure didn't want those gains to come at her expense and suggested that Maria Taylor was promoted to be an NBA countdown host over her because of race, not skill set. They said to me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA finals, what do you do? Where's the sideline reporter job for the NBA finals? And I said, well, I'm not going to be the sideline reporter. I'm going to be the sideline reporter. And I said, well, for Maria to do the hosting. Yeah. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that. And um, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I, you know, I wish Maria Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need, to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like, crappy one-time record on diversity, which by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like, you're not going to find it with me. Rachel Nichols later issued an apology an ESPN anchor is apologizing for implying that a black colleague got opportunities because of the color of her skin. The comments came during a phone call that was recorded, and now it's causing a big headache for ESPN right as the NBA finals get underway. However, in my opinion, it didn't hold much weight or merit to some at the ESPN network because ultimately they pulled the plug on Nichols' show and her tenure with the company. Maria Taylor, I believe, even took the social media to address the situation. Hey, black woman, I just wanted you to know that uh, you're pretty dope. Like, I don't care what society tells you. They might tell you that your skin's not pretty enough, that there's not enough shades to match your makeup, that although all women make 82 cents to the dollar on white men, you make 62 cents. They may tell you that you don't deserve that promotion, even though you know you do. 
They may tell you that when you get the promotion that you only got it because you were black. But we know that's not true. I just want you to know that I believe in you. So resist the urge to fall in line. Don't be humble, girl, brag, because you are so fine. You're the only one that can do what you do on a daily basis and never say boo-hoo to anyone because you are the one, the black woman that's stronger than everyone. So in 2020, ESPN had reportedly offered to increase Maria Taylor's $1 million annual salary to about $5 million, which she ultimately had turned down. Reports say that she was looking to be one of the highest paid personalities on the network, asking for about $8 million a year. Now, after either party could actually come to an agreement, Taylor decided to leave the network the day after the 2021 NBA Finals had concluded on July the 20th. Maria had went on to sign with NBC Sports, taking on multiple assignments and roles like the Olympics in Tokyo, and also contributing to the coverage of the NFL, hosting Football Night in America and Super Bowls as well, according to NBC Sports. All right, guys, so it's time for you all now to sign off on this Mitchell report. If you guys have been covering ESPN and the NBA, you guys should be pretty much familiar with this story. However, I want to know from your perspective, which one do you feel initiated the most Maria Taylor parting ways with ESPN? Do you think it was a money thing, a contract thing, or do you think that the Rachel Nichols thing really was the, was set the tone for her actually leaving and not wanting to stay? Because ESPN, I felt like, quickly moved when it came to, to Rachel Nichols. They didn't really play any games as a company. I don't feel like um, at least the, the best of my recollection, they was pretty steadfast on handling their business and being prompt. But Maria Taylor was looking to be paid like $8 million a year. And if I'm not mistaken, that's like Stephen A. Smith money. So I don't see how she thought that she had that type of leverage or cachet to get that much money. She turned down the deal and then I think she just felt like the environment possibly because we do know the history of ESPN. It sounded like the environment of that company and the network was something that she didn't really look forward to being in for a long time and she just decided to part ways. I don't know how much she actually got from NBC Sports, but you know, I'm not so sold that the contract negotiation issue was the sole reason that Maria Taylor actually decided to part ways with ESPN. I really think that this Rachel Nichols bombshell, you know, dropped a huge uh, bomb in the NBA world because not so much that Rachel Nichols was caught talking, you know, behind the scenes. What she was saying could actually been true. And I think that was the problem. Maria could have been given posi positions and assignments at ESPN because of the color of her skin, because they're trying to enhance their diversity program or whatever you want to call it. So it's a tough pill to swallow, but I think, you know, both things definitely, I think, had an impact and an effect on Maria's tenure with the company. But I'm trying to gauge which one do I feel like was the most realistic play. Money to most is the end all be all, but when you are disrespected or when you feel like there's no type of loyalty, you know, that could also be a whole nother story. Y'all guys, let me know what y'all think about this situation with Maria Taylor leaving ESPN. I'm Seven Mitchell with the Mitchell Report. I thank you guys so much for your support. If you enjoyed today's story, make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and make sure you check out the Mitchell Report playlist of all the videos that we have for the Mitchell Report series, we have about, what, 80 to 100 crazy sports stories in the library. So make sure you become a member of our YouTube channel and check out all the stories in the Mitchell Report. Once again, man, I'm Seven Mitchell with the Mitchell Report. Y'all let me know what y'all think about Maria Taylor and the situation with Rachel Nichols with the leaked audio. Be sure to smash that like button, and if you enjoy the Mitchell Report series, leave a little quick tip or donation at the Super Thanks. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.